Next up on WTV, Christmas in the Square, a 3DMA project, and this week's edition of Real Talk. WTV's daily update starts now. Hey there, Red Hawk Nation. Today is Friday, December 21st, and I'm Netta Even with today's daily update, brought to you by Wingspan TV. Local lakes may not be freezing over, but ice skating is still an option for those near the rail yard districts. WTV's McKenna Walsh has the details. Christmas in the Square is back once again at Frisco Square, across from the Toyota Stadium, where there is now a temporary ice skating rink, horse carriages, and a choreographed light show. It was just really fun overall, and I really enjoyed it because the atmosphere was really nice. Um, the, my favorite part was the lighting of the Christmas tree because everyone gathered around there and it was like a really big thing and the moment it lit up it was just really nice. To help set the winter vibe, elementary school choirs are performing to celebrate the holiday festives at the square as well. My favorite part was um, the food, the pop-up shops, and then all of the Christmas music from all of the little kids because they're so delightful. Christmas in the Square runs until January 8th. Reporting for WTV, I'm McKenna Walsh. Creating their own characters isn't just something for writers. WTV's Dimash by McCon explains. Students in the 3D modeling and animation class are moving from inanimate object to creating new characters of their own choice. Well, for this project, they're, they're actually modeling a character. It's, it's a whole different process because there's curved shapes and they use what are called reference images. So you have reference images in the software and then they try to fit the model and shape the model to that. Students use a modeling software called Maya, which allows them to use their imagination and create new characters. I think it's really cool. Like it has a lot of different tools and the software is like really flexible. Like it allows me whatever, it allows me to do whatever I want to really. The skills that are taught in this class provide a foundation for students to possibly pursue future 3D modeling opportunities. Reporting for WTV, I am Dimash by Mahan. With the 2023-2024 school year being halfway over, it's time to select our courses for next year. WTV has the details. During the final weeks of this year, students had the opportunity to change their course selections for next year. If students have not changed their courses yet, the deadline is today and all changes must be submitted by then. But unlike years past, students will not have a window April to make changes with everything happening a little sooner, according to lead counselor Amanda Zambezi. So right now you can make any changes to your classes for your four-year plan, um, but mostly for next year is what we're looking at. Reporting for WTV, I'm Haley Johnson. Some people like to go all out on their holiday decorations, and journalism teacher Brian Higgins is not an exception as he embraces his inner Clark Griswold in this week's edition of My Life As. My daughter Piper is the one that helps me, so we walk outside and she usually pushes the button on the Wi-Fi outlet to turn everything on. I can also do it on my phone, but she likes to push the button. So once everything's powered up, we just walk around the yard to make sure everything looks how it should be. Sometimes we have to help the inflatables and um, they get caught up on the strings. Rise, I've been buying cheap. these inflatables over the last Rise. probably 10 years or so. It started with one and it's grown into oh, a look, kind of a crazy a obsession that just makes me I'll smile. Go. I think we have about 28 inflatables. There's lights in the planters on the tree. There's lights around the yard and, of course, around the house. So I do my best to embrace my inner Clark Griswold from Christmas vacation. And it's a little bit extreme, but when I see people stop and look at our decorations, it makes me smile. And I like to stand out there and look at everything because it just makes me happy. And sometimes that's, you know, all you need in a day is just a little smile. So that's my life as Clark Griswold. On this episode of STEM Spotlight, potential and kinetic energy are at the heart of a recent AP Physics Lab. WTV's Harris Ramon explains. Three, two, one. Wow. 
Recently, students in AP Physics were doing a lab where they had to measure the potential and kinetic energy by moving a marble from one point to the other in a curvy ramp. Students such as Junior Sohail Sheikh find this lab fun, as the students have multiple chances in finding results within the lab. So in our lab, we are measuring the potential and kinetic energy of a marble as it goes down a ramp. So when we actually did the experiment, we found out that the potential and kinetic energy of the marble have an inverse relationship, and the total energy of the lab was um, actually decreasing because of the force of friction on the ramp. What I find fun about this lab is that you can essentially redo the experiment as many times as you want, and you're doing it with your friends, and it's a more interactive experience to find the relation between kinetic and potential energy. Reporting for WTV, this is Haris Rahman. Winter break starts tomorrow, and in today's Real Talk, WTV's Natalia Soto asked students all about it. Hey there, Red Hawks. It's Natalia Soto with another edition of Real Talk, and today I'm going to be asking students about Christmas break. What are your plans over the Christmas break? Um, I don't really have anything planned, just to like stay home and relax. Uh, yeah, for real, I'm going to go to my mom's house and go chill for a little bit. Um, hang out with friends and family, pretty much. Uh, I don't really have anything planned, but I got family coming over and stuff. That's cool. What presents did you ask your parents for Christmas or Santa? Uh, I'm getting a PC. It costs like 500. I'm finna get me, what else is it? Oh yeah, that, that PS5 and that, that 3D, that 3D headset thing. Yeah, I'm finna get that too. A PC and a PS5? Yeah. Damn. A... To be honest, there's nothing I really want this Christmas. Nothing? Yeah. Um, a new phone, because I have a really old one. Um, I didn't ask for too much this year. A new Polaroid, because mine broke, but yeah. Do you have any traditions you do over the holiday break? Uh, uh my uncle owns a ranch in Arlington, I think, and uh, we go there and just meet up and stuff. That's cool. Uh, nah. Mm -mm. It's okay. Um, not really. Me and my family, like, we like to go to North Carolina, but we're not doing it this year. We always do, like, a little potluck, and we all, like, hook and bring stuff, so. Do you think Santa's real? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, you can Definitely. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's go. Got another one. Reporting for WTV, I'm Natalia Soto. On today's sports, WTV's Jaden Harris brings you a look into Red Hawk athletics. With winter sports in full effect, Red Hawk athletes have been in action over the last couple of days. Starting off with swim and dive in their final event before the new year, the team competed against Panther Creek High School at the Bruce Eubanks Natatorium. The Red Hawks would see some mixed results against the Panthers heading to break. Both boys and girls soccer continuing preseason on Tuesday, the boys' team was looking to continue its winning streak while the girls were hoping to find a win. Neither team was able to manage a goal as the boys would lose 2-0 to McKinney North and the girls 1-0 to Mansfield. Coming back to the nest tonight, the boys' team takes on the Samuel High Spartans in their second-to-last preseason game before they begin their preseason tournaments. The game will start at 7 p.m. The boys wrestling team went to Independence High School yesterday to take on multiple district opponents. Overall, the team would finish 2-4 with just too many holes to fill for the Red Hawks to overcome against teams like Frisco and Reedy. As the boys team is officially on break, the girls team is currently taking their run at the city duels at Independence. Coming off of a dominant 2-0 district start, the girls basketball team is looking to continue their winning streak. Head coach Ross Reedy believes that a team is never expecting a dominant win. You never really expect that. With that said, we are expecting to be able to go out there, use each other, uh, play our assignments, you know, follow the scout report, do the things that we're both uh, individually and collectively, you know, do the things that we do well, and, uh, and hopefully that puts us in a position to have some success. After losing four games straight, the team has surged back, winning their last five games. So we're starting to play basketball, pretty good basketball. We've been on a four-game losing streak, and since we've done, uh, we've won uh, five in a row. I get some really quality ball clubs. The game will start at 5.45 p.m. at Emerson. 
Coming off of a challenging non-district schedule, the boys' basketball team is looking to start the district season off right with a win against Emerson tonight. The team will hit the court after the girls' game with a tip-off at 7 p.m. Reporting for WTV, I am Jaden Harris. If you're looking for more from Wingspan, you can follow us at Liberty Wingspan on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or visit our award-winning website, libertywingspan.com. That's it for today's daily update. This is Netta Even for Wingspan TV.